signed at ringside, and they are Bert Clements, Anik Hongkongkan, and John Kane. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Kenny Bayless. And now, from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino of Las Vegas, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue, and weighing in officially at 126 pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one. 34 victories, including 12 knockouts with only one defeat. Here is the fighting pride of Fort Worth, Texas, the two-time world champion, Holy Ayala! And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed with black, and he officially weighed in also at 126 pounds. And he also has an outstanding professional record consisting of 41 victories, including 31 knockouts with only one defeat. Amas y caballeros de la zona norte, Tijuana, Mexico. The former two-time world champion, El Terrible Eric Mo. Great air of anticipation here. People in the boxing business have been really looking forward to this one. Kenny Bayliss, the referee. Trunks are high on both sides. Any punch thrown in this area is considered a clean punch. Now, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want you to protect yourself at all times. Keep the fight clean at all times. And what I say, you must obey. Good luck. Touch gloves. So here we go again in the division that brought you Johnny Kilbane, Kid Chocolate, Henry Armstrong, Willie Peck, Sandy Sadler, Vicente Saldivar, Ruben Olivares, Salvador Sanchez, Eusebio Pedroza, Barry McGuigan, Azuma Nelson, and a few Brits as well alongside Paul Hodkinson who held this very title, the WBC Featherweight Championship vacant because Marco Antonio Barrera didn't want the belt after beating Morales. Two close thrillers, of course, Morales involved in with Barrera. Ayala moving up from super bantamweight. He made three defenses of the WBA's bantamweight title and has a couple of wins, contentious ones, albeit over Johnny Tapia, recently beaten by Barrera. Morales in the white trunks will perhaps look to keep the fight at range. Ayala, noted for many things, all his skills, but not a heavy hitter. Only 12 knockouts on his record, Glenn. Yes, that could be the key for Morales. He has adopted a boxing style of recent. We're not looking to bang, but in this fight, he mightn't fear the power of Ayala and might decide to stand and slug it out. And Ayala, a tenacious southpaw who's hardly ever in a dull fight. Always in shape, great work ethic, no frills, well schooled, throws good right hooks and lefts through the middle too. And one thing he might have in his favour is speed. Just wonder about Morales' power too, don't you, at this weight. His last three have gone the full 12 round distance. That's right, he's trying to box a little bit more after that terrific first Barrera fight. You know, you just wonder, did that take a little bit out of him? He's a little more tentative in his style these days. That's where Ayala wants to be, close in, throwing those short little hooks. Apparently there was a very, very big bet on Ayala from one of the high rollers a few hours before the fight here. Well, he's starting quite well, Ayala, he's aggressive, just giving Morales a few problems behind this southpaw stance. 
Getting in close enough, often enough, Ayala in this first round to gain encouragement. And that's a sharp left hand too. Morales just struggling a little with his speed though. Morales' his right hand was a reminder not to get too close too often. Yes, that's the punch Morales is looking for. He's just using his head, trying to draw Ayala onto that right. Good start. No shortage of action. Morales not entirely successful in trying to keep the fight at range. As he is taller, he's younger, and he does have more power. But he's never been elusive, Morales. No, he has. Neither has Ayala. Ayala normally pretty easy to hit. Well, it's got all the promise of a very good one here, judging by that opening round. He can't even... I can see the shots as old as I am, sir. This guy is nothing, okay? Now, you, you've got, got an idea of what he can do, which is nothing. It's how you feel. Okay, look, remember everything we've done in the gym, okay? Veteran trainer Henry Mendez with Paulie Ayala. Never heard Eric Morales described as nothing before. <laughs> yep, he didn't give him a great deal, but he's just trying to give him the confidence. They're just getting that the jab working a bit, Morales. Didn't work that well in the opening round. Ayala just a bit busier. Wasn't a lot in it, but Glenn and I thought Ayala shaded that opening session. Second round, Ayala in the blue trunks, remember? Former champion at bantamweight and IBO, super bantamweight champion. He beat Clarence Bones Adams twice. Once disputed, the other one. Well, pretty sound beating, although uh, Adam says he was ill for that fight. But Ayala looks confident to me here. He does look confident. It looks as if his strategy is to put the pressure on Morales, get him on the back foot and try and outwork him. Ayala blocks quite a few as well. His fights are notoriously hard to score. They've been... Many arguments raging about the two fights with Tapia, among a few others as well, including one against uh, the Mexican Hugo De Anzo when he was on the floor, Ayala. And some people thought he was lucky to get the decision. Has to be busy with that jab, Morales, you feel. Yes, he certainly, he's looking to be accurate, he's looking to take his punches more, Morales. is better from Morales in this round not getting hit so much the better defensive skills great action as the two of them swap over on those far ropes well this is a good blend of styles which should just come together to make this an excellent fight Cut on the inside, the right, not sure it landed flush from uh, Morales. The right hand has been a real honey punch for him down the years. He was blowing away everybody at a super bantamweight. Nine defences of the WBC title at eight stand ten pounds. Nearly all by stoppage. Not Wayne McCulloch, though, who's in a thriller with him. But certainly in this round, his concentration is better for Morales. He's picking his shots more. He looks more purposeful. He ought to be stronger at the weight. It's a big ask, really, for Ayala, who was a bantamweight only 20 months ago. Morales just slipping up a gear. Good left hook landing for him. And I just wonder whether Ayala is feeling the weight of some of these shots. He is as well, remember, six years older than the man in front of him. another good round but a better one for Morales who's now fighting his kind of strategy and making it work a bit more from range Morales is round well we've been watching this fella Glenn since he was 18 years old Eric Morales I mean how many thrills has he given boxing fans along the way well he is just a terrific performer and he's done so well and you just saw some of the skills some of his good work 
in the second round started to pick his punches more started to get the accuracy and just catch Ayala coming in I think Ayala in the second round just started to feel the power of Eric Morales because the great great fighters can move up through the weights but as they do so they lose something along the way usually even the great Sugar Ray Robinson couldn't make it all the way to light heavyweight among many examples wasn't a bad welter in middle though was he <laughs> not bad at all <laughs> Morales in white remember from Tijuana of taxi fame Ayala the hero of Fort Worth Texas where he's almost as big in that area as the Dallas Cowboys they tell me can't see Ayala knocking out Morales, not unless there's a huge upset. He has to be outworking him, doesn't he? Yeah, that's what he's got to do. He's got to throw an awful lot of punches. We know he can do that. That's his style. But it's just with the extra power of Morales. Will that tell? Morales getting a million pounds for this fight. Ayala's on 800,000 pounds. Good work for featherweights. But they deserve it for everything they've done in the ring. Well, he's looking a bit puffed up around the face, Ayala, and noticeably in reverse gear a little here. Yes, is he starting to feel the extra weight in the punches? You, so you, you can, wonder, don't you, Glenn? You do. You can see physically how much bigger he is, Morales, much taller. And Ayala at the moment just showing a reticence to get in range. Now that would be bad news for him. is pretty smart by Morales at the moment working him over from the outside but don't underestimate Ayala's ability to suck it up and come back with something well he's picking his right overcuts very well Morales the right hand the punch against the southpaw Suffer cuts twice on the inside from Morales and then that right hand again from him. I wonder if there'll come a point here where Morales might fancy he can just walk through Ayala. They haven't got anywhere near that yet. No, he doesn't want to get too overconfident in with a fighter like Ayala. Who he's shown in the past got plenty of courage, plenty of character. That's a fine left hand as well from Morales, who's certainly landing the cleaner blows. There's Morales just picking his punches better, and certainly a more confident look about the work of Eric Morales. He started off, I thought, looking a bit tentative, not anymore. He's beginning to take control of this. Okay, Danny, give him a, a little bottle of water. They're a little more worried in that corner now, not so belligerent. <laughs> That's right, I think he gives Morales a little bit more respect now. Two good rounds for Morales, just starting to pick his punches, a more confident look about the way he's going about his work. Ayala, by the way, beaten only once in 35 fights. That was a technical decision in the seventh round against Joicho Tatsuyoshi for the WBC Bantamweight Championship in Japan four years ago the only time he's lost he's come close to losing a few other times mind you blue trunks remember Ayala the Texan Morales of Mexico in white you always look for signs of ring wear with Morales because he's been in some hard ones hasn't he in recent times even that one against the Korean Injin Chi who was heroic that night and got cheered out of the ring a lot of people thought Morales was flattered by the wide margins he got But Ayala has to get busier, he has to try and take the fight to Morales. Good left hand from Ayala. Crowd enjoying this one. No problem selling the tickets at the Mandalay Bay here in Vegas, which has become 
one of the cathedrals of world boxing. And Bob Arrow, who handles both of these fighters, saying in the build-up, never underestimate the intelligence of Ayala. It's his biggest asset. He doesn't miss a trick. Well, he's trying to adopt a more controlled aggression in this round. Caught by the left hand on the way in, though, and there's the problem for Ayala. How to get inside without taking Morales's jab or more powerful right. Ayala was saying before the fight, I'm not going to let him do what he wants to do. It's easy to say, harder to do. He probably knew that, mind you. Still, you can tell that Morales looking for that right hand, whether it's a straight punch, an uppercut, or a hoop. That's the, the shot he's looking to try and get on. Well, Ayala's camp were very, very confident of one thing going into this fight. His trainer, Henry Mandis, was saying he might beat us, he might get a decision, a lucky decision. But I tell you what, Morales won't knock out Paulie. See if he's right. Good little left hand on the inside, that's where Ayala needs to get. Well, he's done better in this round, Ayala, starting to try and double up the jab just to get him into range. And again, lands with a good left hand. Oh, Morales, though, suddenly goes to town right at the end of the round, almost as if he knew that we were in the last ten seconds and the judges were about to mark their cards. Close round, shot of Ayala's oh, wife, Letty, there's two doing, very man. devoted. Gotta be working that jab, okay? But don't stand in front of him, move, give him a little more angles, okay? That was a better round for Ayala, did he do enough to win it, Glenn, do you think? Yes, I thought he did, I thought throughout the round, barring the last ten seconds, he got the better punches in, tried to dominate behind his double jab, and he just pushed Morales back. And other than that, the last ten seconds that we just saw, Morales didn't really get comfortable in the round. It was an arguable one though, wasn't it? That one, I think. The closest round. By the way, Morales has been doing some uh, sparring with Steve Molitor, the Canadian who British fight fans might remember coming over and beating Nicky Booth of Nottingham. Good fighter he was, so uh, some quite high-class sparring. And also uh, Jorge Arce, the light flyweight champion, who's on this bill tonight. So that will have been good speed work there for Morales in preparation for Ayala. Still just the impression that Morales is a rather more cautious and less powerful character as a nine stoner than he was at 8-10. Agree with that, Glenn? Yes, yeah, certainly since the, the Barrera fight. Yeah, he hasn't went in with that same sort of purpose. He's much more, you know, he's a, a more thoughtful boxer, trying to do it with his jab and think things out. Sneak little right hand from Ayala. But in the main, the fight being fought more, maybe, in Morales' territory from the outside. Well, it's probably the, the good tactics for Morales. He's got the height, got the reach. It makes sense, really, to keep it at long range, certainly for a while. He's skipping out of range, too, when Ayala does try to close him down. I think one of the problems Ayala has is he doesn't have the punch power, really, to make enough of a dent in Morales. No, he's got to look to be busy, outwork Morales. But he is clever and he is a good technician with lots of ring craft, Ayala. And this is good work with the left jab from Morales.
fascinating tactical battle as these high-class championship fights so often are in Las Vegas. A short little right hand just seemed to trouble Ayala a bit there inside. Good body shots from Ayala. Certainly having his moments, even in rounds where Morales is the more dominant personality. Yeah, yeah, it was. It wasn't that a good shot. Just showing his skills in fighting there, Morales. Electing to stand with Ayala. Oh, it's good stuff. Welcome back to the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. Miguel Diaz, is there ever a fight staged in this city where he is in, in a corner? I don't think so. <laughs> He's everywhere. I reckon there's more than one of him. <laughs> Dad Jose back training Eric Morales. He had an amicable split from uh, Floyd Mayweather's dad. And there's that the right overcut that is used so well in the, the last round. Morales looking to pick the shots. thousand fans in the Mandalay Bay absorbed by this round six for the WBC's featherweight title in the fight that they daubed never surrender American audiences by the way having to pay the equivalent of 26 pounds to watch this fight yes and Morales just a small lead on my car just one point Glenn and I differed on the fourth, I gave that to Morales as well, so I've got him in a pretty handy three-point lead. But as we so often say, we'd never try to second-guess the judges in Las Vegas. By the way, one of them is Britain's John Keane, who gets some high-profile appointments. Good left hand by Arla, probably his best punch so far. Caught Morales flush with that. Is Morales just a little bit square on? And again. Well, look at Ayala, step this up here. Morales just seeming to lose concentration. He sometimes does that through the middle rounds of fights. And this is what Ayala needs. He needs to get in the fight. He needs to start to get the respect of Morales. Good start to the round by Ayala. That will have woken up Morales. Well, Morales needs to react, he needs to come back firing. Definitely quicker hands, Ayala. Well, needs to respect their touch glove after their heads bang together. But Kenny Bayless has hardly been needed. A fine exhibition these two are putting on. Right hands from the pair of them there. There's better ones from Morales. Oh, I think yeah. he's heard him here. Yeah, right through the middle. Ayala just going through a bad moment or two, but he's used to riding out the odd crisis like this. Can Morales land more of these? He's leaving himself a bit open to these right hands, and Morales will help himself. And he's a dangerous man to play that kind of game with. Morales looking to plant his feet, he's looking for the big right hand. Stronger at the weight, it's showing once or twice here, despite Ayala's high work ethic. Just dropping the hands a little bit too much, Morales getting a bit overconfident. Well, he's very confident, isn't he? Dropping the gloves here, showboating a bit. And he landed with some big shots in that round, Morales. Best round of the fight so far. 
the sixth. Very good, baby. Very good. Just keep it up, Lucky. Keep it up, Lucky. That looks good. Very good. How you feel, man? Good, baby. Give me the Vaseline. Here. Let me see you later. There's a few more bumps around the face of Ayala, especially over the left eye, and we see it's the good shots from Morales that started to bring that swelling up. Just seemed for the first time to make a little dent in Ayala. But Ayala landed a cracking left, didn't he, right at the start of the round. I mean, he might, he might have pea shooter power compared to Morales, but I think he jolted him with that one all right. He's still got power enough. Yeah. You don't do what Ayala has done unless you haven't got some sort of power. Well, absolutely. Two wins over Tapia for a start, even if they were a bit arguable. Seventh round, white trunks, remember. Morales of Mexico and Ayala from Fort Worth in Texas. He did weigh 123 pounds within three pounds of featherweight for the second Tapia fight, which was a non-title affair, by the way. So his camp are saying it isn't his featherweight debut, but I think it is to all intents and purposes. Well, Morales finished the last round very confidently. And that after Ayala had nailed him a couple of times as well, early on in the round. Well, that's the type of fighter Morales is. He's never going to let you get away with too much. No knockdown. Good spirit between the two fighters. There's been absolutely no animosity in the build-up. I don't think um, Paulie Ayala has any animosity with anybody on the planet. Good stuff from him on the inside, Ayala there. Morales well, just trying to get the angle right, to get the, the right hand on against the southpaw, just stepping around a little bit. Morales says go away as Ayala outworked him on the inside for a few seconds. Back comes Morales, here's his answer. <laughs> and Ayala spreads his arms out to say, OK, that all you got with that right? <laughs> Almost taking a, a student to school there, Morales. Well, it was a little act of defiance, that, wasn't it, by Ayala? The way he spread it out his arms, as if to say, yeah, you're landing with a few, but you're not blasting me out of here. Don't think you are. Well, this is starting to warm up into a good fight now. Ayala trying to get close, trying to put the pressure on Morales. I think it's a terrific fight, and it's getting better. And this is good from Ayala now. Working in close, making Morales miss a bit. It's a tremendous effort from Ayala, who rams on that left hand. And again, and he's blocking Morales' right with the gloves. It's really high-class technical stuff in close from Ayala, but he just leaves himself open to a couple. Back comes Morales. The tide ebbing and flowing in the fight. This is where you see the strength and determination of Morales. Look at him come back. He's been in these type of fights before. Well, the last couple of rounds have been memorable. This round, I want you to do the same thing, but I want more movement. Okay, I, I need for you to move a little bit more. Okay, a little bit more. Move. Don't stay in front of me. Okay. I want some more movement. Continue doing what you're doing, but you got to do it with giving you side angles. Okay. We've got a great relationship, those two. Longtime trainer Henry Mendez for Paul Ayala. Yeah, Ayala just getting his uppercuts on, but Morales come back a little bit flashy. But always Morales, who always just wants to get back there. If he's been hurt with a shot, or Ayala's had a little bit of the round, Morales comes flying back. Well, that last round, I thought Ayala won the first two minutes of the round and Morales the last minute. I gave that one to Ayala. Well, I disagreed. I thought Morales was the cleaner puncher. Don't worry, the judges are disagreeing about some of them too. <laughs> Here's round eight. 
white trunks of Morales. Ayala told to come up with some more movement. Just pulling away on my card. Three points ahead now, Morales, but Ayala very very courageous he wants this fight very badly but he can't keep taking those big shots that he was taking from morales in the last 30 seconds of the round before the left eye starting to close up close yeah it's been a swelling around the face for quite a while for ayala and the last thing he needs is that left eye to close, because then it'll make it even harder to see the rights. I've got the same scorecard as Glenn, by a slightly different route. We both agree Morales is in a three-point lead at this point. That's a good left uppercut on the inside, though, from Ayala, whose last eight fights, by the way, have gone the distance. The last seven of them, the full 12-round distance. Well, Morales' last three have gone the distance. I'm sure he'd love to get a stoppage here. But I don't think he'll worry so long as he gets the win. It's only a win worth having over a fighter as good as Paulie Ayala. It's no formality, though, and never has been. Such a good technician, Morales. He's worked so long and hard for this fight. Looks like the best place for Ayala is when he can get in close to Morales' chest and let those short hooks go. He looks the boss, I think, on the inside because of his quicker hands. But all the time it's out there, you fancy Morales to unload one of those rights, don't you? That's right, it's the best place for him to be, but you just wonder the punching power of Morales in close. Is it too much for Ayala? Is that why he has to stay at range? He's trying to get there now. Morales again drops his gloves and launches another assault. Morales in control of it at the moment. Bravely, bravely Ayala trades with him, but that's another Morales round, and I think he is pulling away at this point as Ayala's left eye closes up even more. And Morales is unmarked, he's, he's lucky he's got that leathery skin that never seems to mark much. Well, he's also very good defensively. You know, he Catches shots on his gloves, slips them by with the tiniest margin. I think he redeemed his reputation a bit, Morales. Not that it needed a lot of redeeming in that last fight with Barrera, where Barrera got the decision. A lot of people thought Morales might have nicked it. Yes, I thought Morales won that the, the last fight with Barrera. But he didn't win the first one, I don't think. No, he got that. That's right, that's right. So maybe it just justice was done. I think it was in the strange way that boxing sometimes has of dishing out that justice. Look at Ayala's left eye, it's a problem. Here's round nine. Morales has beaten six world champions in two weight divisions along his path to glory. The suspicion here at the moment that Ayala, though he is having his moments in the fight, isn't having enough of them. Great left hand, and look at Morales there. Say, oh, look, I'm all concussed by it. The old playing possum routine. Well, he knew he'd been hit with a shot as well. He acknowledged it. How discouraging would that be for Ayala that he'd hit him probably with as hard a shot as he's got in the armory? And Morales just smiles through the gun shield at him. Well, it is discouraging, but he did land the shot. If he can do it once, he can do it again and again. But 
But Morales coming back, just wanting to put Ayala in his place. Got to the point, I think, with Morales now, that he is a big featherweight going on super featherweight. Well, he's still tall, still thin, certainly could go up, I think. And fighting, let me remind you again, a man who is a bantamweight as late as last year. It's showing. Yes, it is now. The better punches, the stronger punches are from Morales. He's boxing with a man who's got that edge in confidence. The old cliche about the good big and will always beat the good little one. Being given some meaning in this contest, perhaps. Swing back out of range and then straight back forward to get his own shots on Morales. But at the moment, he cannot quell the fire of Ayala. You get this impression these two really respect each other as men and fighters, don't you? Well, at this level, fighters do. They know that they're, who they're in with are very, very good. Unlike the Morales Pereira rivalry, which is pretty personal. Pereira was wishing Morales good luck before this fight. Morales didn't want to know about it. No, I think there's enough animosity just not to be quite healed over yet. And maybe a third meeting might sort that out. Glenn and I met Morales in his hotel room in Vegas once. He's a real, uh, a real joker, lovely guy. As is Pereira, by the way, and Ayala. He's having it hard though, Ayala now. He's a real student of the game, Paulie Ayala. Um, he knows all about Scott Harrison. Student of it, wants to be a commentator when he finishes. Well, he does talk well, knows the game. Great personality and a very likeable guy. But he's finding it tough in this fight. Ayala's pulling away. He did get that big left hand Morales, on. Morales, you mean? Sorry, Morales. Yeah. Did get that big left hand on. And look at the reaction from Morales. Oh, look at the sweat spraying under the arc lights. <laughs> no, they both know the business back to front. It was almost like a, a scene from a gym, wasn't it, that? <laughs> Kenny Bayliss. Don't know if they pay him any extra for mopping up as well. He's doing the refereeing. Well, he's not having to do much in the ring, is he? It's good contest, fought well and kept clean. Well, he's got the best view in the house and he's getting paid for it. It almost has been a watching brief this for Bayliss. Tribute really to the way both of these two men have gone about their work. But Ayala needs something now. Yes, he's falling way behind on the, the scorecards, one would think. Certainly on mine he is. I wonder how that high roller who put all those hundreds of thousands on Paulie Ayala is feeling at the moment watching this. <laughs> it always worries you when high rollers do anything in Vegas. You can probably afford it, I would think. They fly these guys in by private jet, don't they, for nothing. In the hope that they'll lose their money. Good stuff on the inside from Ayala, one of two of those, or just one of them anyway, drifting a bit low. Morales is in control of things at the moment, on the scorecards. Has Ayala fought his fight? Has he got anything else to offer this late? Well, he's got to try and come with something different, it's Morales who's dictating this fight. Better for Ayala, picking the shots, body and head, just changing things around a bit. Good left hand, Ayala. Oh, if only, if only he had a bit more of a dig uh, this way. Good 
Good he's worked punches from him as well, though, in this round. He's outworking Morales in this session so far. That's right, Morales just hasn't started to work really. He's just been a bit overconfident. And Ayala in between has been just picking the points up, scoring well to the body. Just gone to sleep a little bit, and sometimes he does lose late rounds, Morales. Notice that there's a bit of a pattern in a few of his fights. Remember he was down in the last round in that absolute epic with Barrera, although he said it was a slip. Real good workmanlike effort by Ayala in that round. He's giving nothing up and punches his gloves to the crowd. These two rounds, son, we got to have the two rounds to make it to where the judges can't take this away from, son. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, we got to do away. They I think don't he's behind, straight don't back they? on this guy. Yes, okay? so I think they these do. The They're trying to rounds that we've been looking get him to work these last two rounds. Stay busy, okay? Just get to get your speed. Look at that pelea muy muy grande. No que no hay que pensar que está ganando la pelea muy grande. You better than the table that one away from Morales, who didn't do much for he once. He didn't. He, I think maybe it was a stage in the fight where he, he needed to take a bit of a breather. Certainly didn't do a lot. Ayala just kept about his work and got the better points. Now somebody was asking Morales about Nassim Hamed, and he shrugged his shoulder and said, is he still fighting? Well, is he? Well, that's a good question, <laughs> isn't it? I'm told he's going to fight Michael Brody. This is in a, a good lead, but Ayala just getting something back in the 10th. Correction, we think he's in a good lead. We've, <laughs> we've seen too many Vegas fights before to say anything is absolutely cut and dried. Ask Marvin Hager about Vegas judging. Well, that's what I mean. What you worry when that the big the big money goes on to somebody that always seems to be a a worry. Now the eleventh round, maybe. Morales has the feeling now he can just box his way down the stretch to a comfortable points win. Ayala having to box with almost one eye closed now. Morales will not want to be too confident. He didn't get that the Barrera fight which we thought he'd won. I think he thought he'd won. So he knows he's got to really get to do it properly. Good little right hand hook there from... Ayala. Morales not having too much trouble though with the southpaw stance. He's beaten the likes of Daniel Zaragoza and Kevin Kelly and Angel Chacon in the past. All lefties. It's not been a factor that, has it? Morales hasn't had any trouble working out Ayala's style. No, I think it maybe took him around just to get the, the jab working himself, but since then he's had no problems. But Ayala still tries to work inside, but it's Morales who's getting the best of this session. He still looks strong, Morales, and fresh too, and completely unmarked. And this is good boxing at range by Morales, who is just shutting out Ayala a little. Ayala, who started a rally in the 10th and looked to continue it in the 11th, hasn't really been allowed to do that. Ayala's looking tired now, and well he might be. Yes, I think the ball's looking a bit tired. It's hardly a surprise, it's terrific pace all the way through from the pair of them. With the better punch picking in this round for Morales. Yeah, good boxing at range by Morales, nothing spectacular, working behind the jab. And in the main, keeping Ayala away, not all the time. That's another round for Morales there. Just the, the better punch picking. 
Well, unless the judges are wearing blindfolds, That's I think right, Ayala man, needs a knockout. You gotta punch, okay? You gotta punch. Look, yes, you gotta come on punch, buddy. Get to your last one, baby. He's fought 12 minutes, rounds man. 11 times. Come out, I want you to stamina. touch gloves. Last and final round. I want you to touch gloves last and final round. Ultimo you wouldn't put it up here, there with the great featherweight fights in history, this, but it's always been absorbing, and a few of the rounds have been memorable. Yes, it has. There's been a lot of quality in there, two very, very good fighters. Well, they think there's still a chance, they think it might be close. And he's got it all to fight for in the last round. And some of the fans are on their feet. In fact, most of them in the Mandalay Bay. Hotel and Casino. Last round here for the WBC featherweight title. And both of them wanting to close the show and leave no doubt about it in the judges' minds, particularly Morales. That's five points ahead, one seven, one, one or two in Morales' favour. I've got it by five to Morales, too. And with the finishing tape in sight, a pair of them up the tempo again. And Morales is now quite happy to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ayala and go for it. Well, they're finishing the show well here, standing toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And Morales is looking the stronger of the two. Well, it's been a good performance for Ayala. He's tried hard, but the feeling is just... The extra power, extra punch picking has been the difference. Well, if Ayala has lost this, he's lost nothing in defeat. Not for me, anyway. In fact, I'd say his reputation's gone up. Yes, and I think he, you know, he's, he can still fight the two band and he can still make that weight. Tell you what, it'd be a good fight. Ayala and Wayne McCulloch. Now then. There you go as a matchmaker again. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Ayala still trying to get the shots in. Decent right hand there. Oh, lovely shot. Combinations here now. Cluster of punches from Morales. Right cross. Trying to let Ayala know who's definitely the boss. Ayala, typically for him, when under pressure, comes out firing himself. Look at this. Last round as well. Two warriors. And what an entertainer Eric Morales is. He knows what the crowd wants. And he's given it to them as well. Morales cutting in big shots. There's half a minute left. Ayala doesn't want to be taking too many of these. This time, straight right through the middle. Morales does not stop punching. Comes up for air. Ayala deserves to hear the final bell. Oh, what a good round for Morales, doesn't he mean business right here at the end of the fight? Morales cannot get him out of there though, much as he dominated that final round, Morales has won the fight, he surely has won the fight by quite a wide margin, he certainly won the last round, I think Ayala has been around this business long enough to know the score, that's Morales' night, surely. Yeah, he just finished the way he had to, but a good for performance in the last round really just stole the show there did well to survive that round Ayala but I think no question Morales' fight well they're already carrying him shoulder high there's Glenn's card there's a big winner 117 111 on my card and he finished it so well with a tremendous last round, almost stopping Ayala. We scored a couple of rounds differently, you and I, but I came out with the same margin. Six points to Eric Morales, who, well, one or two people saying he was short not long ago, weren't they? Morales saying, ah, he's not so good up at featherweight. But I think 
he's on the way back again. I mean, the guy's only lost one fight. It's ridiculous. People talking about him being shot, but they were. Yeah, he's a tremendous competitor. And what a what a brilliant finish of a fight. Really did. You know, he knew he, he could have just knows he's ahead, could just rode the last round out, boxed, but no, that's not his style, Morales. He wants to do it. Britain's John Keane among the judges, along with a judge from Thailand and uh, one from Nevada. Here we go now, here it comes. A round of applause for these two 126-pound warriors. The scoring is as follows. Bert Clements has it, 117 to 111. John Keane scores it, 117 to 111. And Anek Hong Tong Kam scores it, 116 to 112. All for the winner, now the champion once again, El Terrible Eric Morales. Morales gets it, and the scorecard's tallying well, two of them anyway, with those of Glenn and I. By the six-point margin, he's WBC featherweight champion again. Will we see a third fight?